Hello. I see your Tales of Rosaria. Last part, we climbed halfway up a mountain and Rokuro resolved his fight with his brother. And now we're going to climb more of the mountain, but probably not actually do the next thing. I got... What? There was a specific dish I wanted more ingredients for. Uh, it was one of these. I think this one probably. <coughs> Excuse me. Dream herring balsamic vinegar. That's here. Okay. Scout ship setting. Yeah, since this isn't a long episode, we uh, probably don't want to include the boss in all the accompanying cutscenes, but we'll probably have like a few conversations with characters as we climb. Presumably focusing on Mogilu and Aizen and their uh, dislike of Melchior. Perhaps indirectly by Aizen talking about how much he liked Ifrit or something. And the next episode, after defeating Melchior, will be the last cutscene I've seen in the game. Of course, also, that was like... Oh. Uh... Yeah, everything I watched was... December of 2017, so obviously I've forgotten some things by now. It's scorching! No, it's torrid! Wait, no, it's hot! Can you please stop making a fuss? Anyone who can keep their cool inside a volcano needs their head examined! I can feel the power of the Earth Pulse flowing upward. This is the life spring. That's odd. Melchior isn't here. Have you devoured even Shigure, Lord of Calamity? But remember, the only exorcists whose souls are worthy of sacrifice are Shigure, Oscar, Teresa, and me! He's above us, at the volcano's peak. With three souls, you can only awaken three Empyreans! That won't be enough to seal Inominat's power! If you are missing even one, awakening them will cause this volcano to explode, with you inside it! If you seek to awaken all four elemental Empyreans, then come, try and take my soul from me! What do you think, Mogilu? Trap. Melchior's greatest strength lies in his power over ice. I only wish we could lure him down here. But we dare not forget. He's an exorcist who spent years plotting to awaken a Nominat. Exactly. He could be capable of anything. It'd be dangerous to assume otherwise. Maybe this is the wrong time, but Mogulu, you're related to Melchior, right? You'd better believe it's the wrong time. <laughs> Long ago, I was Magilanika Lu Maven, Melchior's foster daughter, and before I was cast out, his disciple. Magilanika? The, the lost legget! Huh. So even after ten years, my name still lives on. I'm impressed. You must have commanded a lot of respect. Not in the least. The relationship between Melchior and I was like that between Velvet and Artorias. The debts owed, and the grudges held. Velvet, you don't have to believe me. You may never believe me. But I tell you now, I want to settle my- I don't much care about the affairs of a witch, now do I? I'm going to the peak to find him. Just doing what I want, like always. Yep, that's right. And I'm going with you. Like always. <laughs> piece of cake, it's a cinch, piece of cinch. It's scorching, it's freezing, it's scorching. What are you muttering about? 
you told me to chill out when I complained about the heat. Is that still bothering you? I heat up quickly and cool down slowly. I'm not bothering anyone, so go on, get lost! That's even more annoying. I mean, come on. If it's both hot and cold, it's not scoresing. It's freaking, clearly. That doesn't sound like me at all. Wait, that's not even my point! <sighs> my skin feels like a frozen shell, but somehow my insides are boiling! This is miserable! <sighs> it should be one or the other. I can't stand this fence sitting! Oh? Well, so what about the pineapple and sweet and sour pork? Gross! A sweet omelette? A crime against nature. Chocolate-covered raisins? Whoever thought up dried grapes should be hanged! Well, then what about peach pie? I don't see what you're getting at! What about yourself? Utterly vile. Doesn't that make you a fence-sitter? That's why I'm having you eat that old man and shove him into the life spring. I hope you learn to like yourself. Don't try to embarrass me. I feel like Magilu lost that conversation in some way. Uh, let's see. I was about to say something during one of the scenes, but opted not to because there was a scene going on. A forward killer. Which button did I put water on? Was it X? No. Or maybe it was, but... I don't know what restrain means still. No, that's not elemental. It's the A button. Oh, except these resist wind. And some of those were hybrid water-wind. Do I have any, like, more pure water techniques besides Twin Whip and Shell Splitter? I guess I can move Shell Splitter here, at least. Oh, and Binding Frost is hybrid with Earth. So Twin Whip's already in the chain. Water Snake's Wake? That's fine. I wonder if the stun chance goes up. Or not chance, but stun buildup goes up based on the element as well. Or if it's only actual damage. got all flat for a bit. Anyway, this combo sure makes Velvet move around a lot. <laughs> Might pull some accidental dodges. Not bad. You too. Resistance shoes mastered. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know, it might still be worth going for- Oh, that's a lot to master, though. Extra focus at low HP, I guess, makes sense for someone with healing arts. I wonder if I want to warp out and hit up the shop. We did just pass the warp point. We will need to be extremely wary. I think I'd rather not. Wait, why'd I do that? No, oh, because I was about to get the soul back, obviously. Oh, I think I'd just been in the middle of saying, like, if this wasn't the sort of game that does just, like, throw conversations in the middle of the dungeon, rather than, like, the beginning or the end, this would be pretty much a totally skippable episode. But we can expect to be interrupted probably, like, at least three more times on our way to the next save point. Level ups. I also considering that the achievement last time was actually for Velvet learning her 50th skill, we're probably about to get a lot of achievements on that theme. 
fine tempering powder just for free. See, I think I actually remember that code red that was on the map. I believe it's the one that's immune to all damage types, and you can only kill it by reflecting damage by using, like, random skills on equipment that cause you to reflect negated damage. And then you negate damage with either perfect evades or... Um... Iframes on the break souls. Barrier ring greatly raises art defense. I don't know. Maybe it was on the ice part of the mountain that that one I'm thinking of was, but I don't think we're ready for a code red. We just need one last soul to awaken the elemental Empyreans. Are you alright, Velvet? I'll eat Melchior, and our collection will be complete. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about you. You collapsed after the thing with Teresa and Oscar. Remember? Uh, you wonder if I'm fine after eating Shigure. It's not a problem. But wasn't Shigure a lot more powerful than they were? But look at me. I'm fine, right? Does it seem like I'm faking it? No. I think I'm just used to it. Both my body and mind. You're not just used to it. You've changed. Mm -hmm. Just as I changed after finding my free will, You've gotten stronger through our travels, too. You faced down many sorrows and hardships, and overcame them all. Did I, though? You did. And that's why I... <coughs> ah. I'll make you a quiche later. Could you make pudding, too? Sure. But are you just trying to butter me up so I'll cook for you? Well, I mean... Uh, yeah. How did you know? You really have grown a lot, haven't you? All right, let's go and find me some Melchior to eat. Yeah! <laughs> Wait, I was gonna say my grade bonus will probably evaporate while I do that climbing, but apparently while you're climbing something, it doesn't actually move. Might evaporate anyway by the time I actually get to the next enemy. Preserved! I could probably afford to just use a Mystic Art here. I think I'm just gonna save for the next boss. Because we've only essentially got half a dungeon where we could build things back up. Although, I have a lot more stars on skills than I did in the early game, so I do get a lot of free blast gauge every fight. Also, that enemy has five souls. Now, actually, let's uh, do one of these, a switch blast. We're what, level 52 now? It's plenty. Especially considering they'd only be like level 55 if we were actually still on normal difficulty. I'm still considering for the final dungeon just changing it back to normal and running past everything. <laughs> Surprised we got more than three grade without a mystic art. I guess the difficulty bonus came both from the difficulty and from them being several levels above us, and the active character taking no damage at all was surprising. I 
I guess that little motion to the right in that combo is actually causing me to dodge a lot of things. Well then, let's move on. Took no damage again. Eleanor is the specialist of the spear. Alright, I think I'm gonna probably give up my grade bonus in order to explore over in this direction. Is that that rock looks suspicious. I thought it might be breakable. Soul bottle. Oh, also, um, the enemy that I think is actually a code red in the ice half of the mountain, all it unlocks is the final difficulty. So, like, who really cares about defeating it? <laughs> I mean, people that want to play on the final difficulty, sure, but... That's not for me. Yeah, also, amusingly, the easiest way to win... Well, I mean, I'll, both amusingly and obviously, but it... You, if you set it to simple difficulty, all enemy resistances disappear, so you don't even have to use reflections. It's obvious that simple difficulty is the easiest way to win, but it's surprising how much easier it gets, is what I was trying to go for. I wonder if you can hover through there if you have the board active. There's not the little, like, swirly symbol here. That's the wrong shoulder button. I was just double-checking that we don't have the hoverboard. This hallway looks like a conversation could happen. No? I was thinking, well, there are no enemy spawns. I don't think there was a chest on the other side of the River of Fire. There's only one more chest in the zone, it's probably over in this dead end. Whoa! We will need to be extremely Is that enemy warp? Are they a warping enemy? It's funny, I distinguish more types of enemies out of battle than in battle. In battle, it's like, yeah, they're are two enemies, and sometimes they have different resistances. <laughs> Everything's either a saber or a caster. But out of battle, you got like the drop down enemies, the warping enemies, and the chasing enemies, and the ch charging enemies. Oh, there was an herb here, not a chest. Maybe there was a chest if I went all the way around the other side of the fire. Whatever. I'm sure whatever is in the remaining chest is not important to the success of the run. I'm not sure what Melchior is really capable of. What kind of man is he? To put it short, he's the exorcist's shadow. Their shadow? They're supposed to be free of malevolence, but they're only human, and so are those who they want to save. But sincerity and conviction alone won't save the world. To remain free of malevolence, they need someone to do their dirty work. A shadow. I see. And that's Melchior's job. During all my time at the Abbey, I was never aware of what he was really doing. So, why hasn't he succumbed to malevolence? Because his belief in the Exorcists as the saviors of the world is pure and unyielding. It is a mountain of ice that will neither boil, nor melt, nor break. I know the depths of his frozen heart all too well. Uh, wait! Does that mean you? Yes. Melchior was raising me to be the shadow for the next leader of the Exorcists. Artorius himself. But that was a terrible mistake. I was unable to live up to his expectations. So if things had gone as he planned, we'd be fighting you instead of Melchior. I'm glad that didn't have to happen. True. If Mogulu was running the Abbey... They would be completely unpredictable. That would be fearsome. Maybe. But doesn't that sound like a whole lot of fun? <laughs> so Melchior was my shadow too. Oh, feeling too sympathetic to fight him. I wouldn't say that. There's nothing to be sad about. Removing shadows is part of a shadow's job. Even if I'm a failed shadow, I'm still a witch and I cast a deeper darkness. 
have to question whether Magili was unwilling or unable. She said unable. But honestly. Perhaps in Melchior's viewpoint she was unable, and that's the narrative she was going for. Yeah, no chest up here either. Oh! Yep. Either they warp, or their ability to spawn directly in front of me is uncanny. Also, their warp is very sudden. I haven't had trouble dodging other warping enemies. Oh well, taking this encounter was probably good for me anyway. And I guess the thing about warping enemies is, since they depend on you to run into them, they never ambush you. I think Starman and Earthbound can ambush you. I think they can warp directly onto you. I can see the peak just ahead. If Melchior's anywhere, he's there. Be careful. That crafty old buzzard is nothing like Shigure. He won't fight us head on. Is victory for us really possible? We're facing the Legate, Lord Melchior. Might give us around four to one against. Four to one? Are our chances that slim? Almost every trick I or any current exorcist knows can be traced back to him. If I throw out three arts at once, he'll pull six out of his hat. He knows our capabilities and he's got far more power. Four to one might be generous. I suppose you're right. However, we have Velvet, the boy, and Rokuro. Who knows what value they'll add when they run amok? It's impossible to calculate, but if luck goes our way, our chances will rise considerably. Right. We are challenging the hardest possible foe. But I'm only talking about a straight-up fight. Knowing Melky or he'll have some nasty tricks. No matter how you analyze it, the outlook is grim. Aizen, you too? What's wrong with a level-headed look at things? Careful consideration could give us the tool we need to turn the odds in our favor. After all, Magilu, Forewarned is forearmed, right? Yes, that's true. Even still, we won't find a weakness in him. Let's take another hard look. What we need might be lying right at our feet. At our feet, eh? I'll keep my eyes on the ground as we walk, then. <laughs> is this the last screen? Yeah. There's probably a save point up by that geo point. Of course, you gotta touch them before they're revealed on the map. This looks like another spot where, like, you'd be able to geoboard across if you had it. Oh, maybe the swirls don't appear until you unlock the area's geoboard? I thought I remembered seeing some without the board, though. In, like, a different area. Oh yeah, like this. Maybe those are only for when it's clearly a pit, rather than... I don't know. I feel like those have showed up when... It was a fluid like water. Mithril Talisman. Did I not need a talisman? Ah, wait, no, you're working on some art attack. Really good for your hidden arts. Hmm. I wonder what level Melchior is gonna be. We're 52 now, the normal enemies are 60. I don't think we have a chance. So let's see. If I remember correctly, that there are enemies that drop down from the ceiling. There are four movement types in this game. I'm thinking back to Earthbound since I brought up the St Starman comparison. How many chase types were in that game? Like, there's clearly the basic one where they just run after you. There are the ones that are attracted to movement, that you can tap past if you're good. Um, 
There are the ones that, like, randomly delay, like the, uh, the puppet guys in Threed, for example. I think also, like, a, a New Age Retro Hippie. Actually, most of the Corrupted Humans, I think, do the random stopping. There's the, like, random movement, like the UFOs. There's the teleport movement, like the Starmen. You're not hurt, are you? No, I'm fine. There's... I think the Cavemen might have unique movement that has, like, more momentum or something than the average chase AI. Um, I don't know, there are a few of them. Hmm. I was kind of expecting one more scene on the way here. Uh, let's take like two fights to round out the episode time. Oh, uh, maybe one fight if uh, these don't die particularly fast. Seeing a lot of two-digit numbers get done. All right, so that move was a uh, a little telegraphed, we can say. I took a lot of damage there. That had some backswing to it. Alright, got him killed. I'll cut down anyone in my way. Shockwood mastered. Expedition return. Nice. I didn't actually like consciously think of that, but that's a good reason to um to something. I have no idea how this will- To extend the episode slightly. To get another expedition sent out. That's what I was working on saying. Yeah, I guess this also has the chase type of just like the enemy waits. That like all the golems seem to do. Just like waits there. Might get up if you get close, but even then it's not gonna chase you very fast. That went really fast compared to the other Golem fight. What happened? Who has bracelet? Haven't you needed a new bracelet forever? Yeah. <laughs> Choose the one with the random skill on it. I don't think we have a Maybe I shouldn't have spent a soul there. Ow. I don't want to die here. That would cost a lot of blast gauge, wouldn't it? I know I have all those, like... Oh, wait, no, I don't have the super titles on. That's the problem. I have the equipment mastery titles on. I was like, I know I have those titles on, but I'm pretty sure I still lose some. But no, the problem is I don't have the titles on. Topaz waistcoat it is, I guess. Alright, well, that's enough. Let's save and quit. Next part, we'll go to the peak of the mountain, defeat Melchior, awaken the Empyreans. Good times will be had by all, assuming I can defeat Melchior. <laughs> anyway, see ya!